Yo, that is sick. What? I had a company called design.ai reach out to me. And when I saw their email in my inbox, I was just like, okay, another sponsor, whatever, another AI platform. And uh, for the most part, that's usually what I get, just a bunch of really bad AI platforms. But this one was unique and I'll kind of go into why that is. But first off, when I was discussing working with them, I was really blunt with them. And normally I'm not like that. I kind of just ease my way into it. But I told them straight up, I was like, if I'm gonna work with you, just so you know, I'm going to be honest with my audience. I'm going to tell them what I don't like and what I do like. And they were completely open to that. Most companies, when they get that kind of email, they just ignore me and they won't get back to me because they don't want you to be honest. They want you to lie to sell their product. But this company was like, yeah, be honest, you know? And they even offered to help me with my prompts to craft better prompts to get better results, which I thought was really nice of them. And it showed that they truly love their product and they want to help me. You know, in my opinion, even if you're, you're using some of the biggest platforms such as Midjourney, if your prompt is not good, you're not going to get great results. You have to know how to craft good prompts in order to get good results. When I first logged into the dashboard here, I noticed immediately they have a print on demand section, which is so cool. I haven't seen a lot of platforms do that, to be honest. And I just think it's really nice that they're putting emphasis on that. So we'll kind of explore that today. Um, obviously, you could do things like remove background, stuff like that. But I just thought that was so cool that they have this. And um, obviously, when you go to the For You page, they have a plethora of AI tools. And some of the most notable ones that I'm going to explore today that I already tested and I thought were more relevant to my audience were um, image to image and um, text to image, obviously, it's gonna work similar to what you would get in Mid Journey. And then um, there's a couple more, image to 3D is kind of cool, and expand is very helpful. So if you have an image that you need to make a little bit wider, you can expand the background. I don't know if you guys remember my Adobe Firefly video, but I took type and I turned it into ketchup and I made it look like I wrote the you know the type with ketchup and it was really cool. I love that, that concept too. But you could do the same thing with design.ai. So if you look at this logo effect, we can basically turn a PNG image into Chrome. So let's say you have your PNG logo or maybe you went into Adobe Illustrator and just typed out your name or brand name or whatever, you could save that as a PNG and upload it. So let me show you how that works. So let's click on logo effect. We could just use their type treatment that they already have in here. And you can already see the prompts already kind of pre-made for you. So we can keep this or we can alter it. Now, what I wanna do is I'm going to remove leather and I just wanna do black background instead because that's more of my style. And I also wanna be able to use this in Photoshop if I wanted to. Now, the structure, is going to work similar to how Adobe Firefly works in the sense that this is basically telling the, the, the AI model how strict you want to follow the logo. So we could do very similar and we could do strict as well. So if you go to the right more, quite strict. So we'll go somewhere in the middle right here and then we can keep everything else the same. The unique thing about design.ai is that you can actually export the generated image as a vector file. So you can export as a SVG and you can even convert it to a 3D object if you wanted to. And if there's anything that you wanna erase, you can use the AI eraser to erase it or you can remove the background using this BG remove um, you know, option here. The results are in and we have four different variations to choose from. This one's actually really cool. It's a little messy, like there's a lot going on. But these options right here are actually quite nice and I'm really happy with them. So for like for me personally, I'd probably pick this one or just this one. So we can actually click on it twice and it will open it up on the canvas here. You can save it directly as an SVG file. So if you want a vector version of this, you can just save it as an SVG. I'd probably save it as like a PNG so I can bring it into Photoshop and use it on one of my designs. So let's go save as image and you can save it as a PNG right there and you can even upscale it so let's uh, choose two times or three times and you can click upscale and use it in Photoshop on your on your artwork. If you're making a t-shirt design or whatever have you, maybe a poster, you can use it for that. That was obviously cool. There's a lot we could do here, but there's another feature that I'm more excited to show you guys and it's called image to image. And the way this works is we can actually take an existing design that we have and have AI revamp it for us and or pretty much you know add to it, let's say. So let's go ahead and click image to image and I'm going to select one of my designs so we can actually remove this one. And let's just choose one from my um, my desktop here. And obviously the dimensions are different, so we can go up to the top left, there we go. And we can scale this up a little bit before we do anything else. Under the playful C side, this is basically the styles. I'm just going to choose no style for this because I really don't want it to influence my prompt at all. So I'm just gonna leave it no style V2. And then right here, I'm just gonna type in AI robot, uh, yeah, robot with lightning 
and clouds and background. We'll try that out and see what it does. And then with this one, we could just keep it in the suggested range. And my prompt actually needed to be revised because I put lighting, not lightning. So I want to put AI robot with lightning and clouds in background. That would be much better. And then for this strictness, we can go maybe a little bit higher, maybe 0.6, and then we'll generate that and see what this does instead. And this is really cool. So again, if you have a composition and you just want to completely embellish it and take it in a different direction, this would be the way to do it. And we can even try a different style. Let's go realistic and then we'll go uh, robot, whatever, lightning and clouds and background. There you go. Let's try that out with realistic style and see what it does. This is like some Iron Man shit right here, but I love it. If you like any of these, you can enhance them. You can ask for, you know, multiple variations and upscale it, of course. So obviously this is number one. We got two, three, four. So if I wanted to upscale four, I would just click number four there and that would upscale four only. And that's really cool. I mean, I love that you could do it all from this dashboard. And if we want to remove the background, we could do that here too. Let's actually try it on this image and see what happens. I'm not going to lie. That's actually not terrible. So there we go. It removed the background flawlessly. And, you know, obviously it got rid of the lightning, but I'd probably just add that back manually anyway. So let's go home now. And I want to go back to this Chrome logo and we're going to click remove background on this. And I just wanted to see what it would do. Because if we can remove the background here and not have to do it in Photoshop, that would save us a little bit of time. And it did a great job. So what I would do is I'd go to my layers and hide this bottom layer and just save this as a PNG. So I'd go here, save PNG. Let's upscale it to like three times and then click upscale. And what I'm going to do is just import it into Photoshop real quick and show you. I'm just going to drag this to Photoshop and you can already see that it's perfectly transparent, which is what we wanted. Let's scale it down a little bit and we'll even add a black background and maybe a filter gallery effect real quick just to show you guys what this can look like. There we go. And actually, if we wanted to, we can even add StyleForge to this. So let's try that out real quick. So I'm going to just merge that together. I'm going to just click Forge. I already have everything where I want it. There we go. And I just updated this with new texture. So the invert texture option needs to be unchecked. That is so cool, man. I really like this. Not even just saying that. Now let's go ahead and try something else. Let's go text to image and we'll make a prompt and see what we can come up with. So let's try something cool. Let's go general. I guess that's fine. Or let's go realistic. Why not? And we'll just type in a prompt. Maybe we could do a angry, <laughs> aggressive dog with spiked collar. Let's see what this does. I'm just typing in something crazy. We don't really have to care about the color palette, but let's go auto on that. Generate. See what it does. Why not? This isn't the best prompt, I'll be honest with you, but I'm just curious to see what it will do. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of cool. Let's type in a specific dog this time. So instead of aggressive dog, let's go Doberman with spiked collar and let's try this out and see what that does. To be honest, though, it looks really good. Like if you look at the drool and the teeth, everything looks really good. Like this doesn't look as fake as a lot of AI models that I've seen. Like honestly, mid journey sometimes will add extra phalanges and shit and it just looks really weird. Wow. I would say it did a pretty good job. Let's try another one. Let's go AI robot <laughs> kind of random, but let's see what it does. That one's really cool. Let's try a more specific style. Let's go dark gothic fantasy dragon with flames, plain black background. Or maybe we are more specific castle and background with lightning and moon and sky. There you go. I love that you can choose the aspect ratio as well, which is pretty nice. Oh, that one looks sick. I like this. Let's place this one on the canvas. That one looks cool. I do have some parts being cut off, so I'm going to click AI editor on the left hand side and let's click generative expand and see what this does. So I'm just going to expand it in all directions. So now we'll click generate and see what it does. I'm not even going to add a prompt because I want to see what the AI model thinks should be there. So this is what it came up with. And to be honest with you, I like them all. I think this one is my favorite just because it has that kind of like foliage in the foreground. Now what I'll do since I like this is I will probably upscale it. So when you go to save it as a PNG, JPEG, whatever, it's going to ask you to upscale it. So let's upscale it three times and just click upscale and see what it does. All right. So click download now and we can open this in Photoshop and take a look at it. And that looks crisp. I love it. And let's add StyleForge to it. Why not? This is actually sick. 
You know, I know people hate on AI, but no matter if you find your images from Adobe Stock, Envato Elements, or Unsplash.com, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get the results that you're looking to get and you can tell your story, that's what matters. There's nothing wrong with using AI, guys. There really isn't. And even if you go to Adobe Stock right now, they have AI images as part of their stock library. So it's part of the future. Get used to it or be left behind. I don't know what else to tell you. Let's go ahead and try the print on demand section for a second because I have a feeling you guys care more about this section. So let's go to workflow and idea to design. This one caught my attention early on in the video. So I wanna explore it a little bit more. And what I notice is it brings you to the same exact dashboard, but it kind of changes the settings depending on what you're trying to do. So for this one, it says a vector t-shirt, text says coffee club in bold, um, vintage letters, a vector graphic of an iced coffee cup. So what we'll do is we'll do a vector t-shirt design, text says uh, dragon slayer. This is gonna be kind of wild, not gonna lie. In bold, vintage letters, um, vintage, maybe serif letters. I'll just do vintage letters actually. A vector graphic of a knight fighting a dragon. There we go. This one's gonna be kind of crazy. A knight fighting a dragon with ice cubes. No, <laughs> with a flaming sword and a straw. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. Um, the background is black. Let's do a black background. Why not? Yo, that is sick. What? This looks sick. What the hell? Yo, this actually looks sick. Wait a minute. I mean, the background's not black. Wow, this actually looks really good. Results is going to show all of your generated images. So anything that you've made so far, you're going to see it right here. And let's say we wanna switch out this design for the other version. You just left click on the thumbnail of that design twice or whatever version you want and it's going to place it on the canvas automatically. And if you go to the layers on the top right, it's going to work just like Photoshop. We have a eye icon that you can use to show and hide your design, and you can even click on a layer that's not hidden. So you just wanna make sure it has the eye icon next to it, and you just hit backspace or delete on your keyboard, and it deletes it. Let's go background remove on this and see what it removes. I'm just curious. I hope it doesn't remove all the detail that we need, but okay, so it actually did a pretty good job of not removing everything that I didn't wanna remove. There's a couple areas that need to be refined, like, uh, let me see, this part right here. I don't know why that's there, but we can even clean that up in Photoshop really easy. Okay, so I have my Dragon Slayer design and it's already upscaled, so it should be really high quality. Let's check the image size. So 216, that's actually not bad. Let's go 300 resolution on this. And inches, we'll go, let's go 15 by 18, 300 resolution, okay. And there we go. And we can actually downscale this just a little bit. And obviously you wanna make that a smart object. There is some transparency here that we really wouldn't want in our main design, but we'll try applying StyleForge to it and see what it does. But you can already kind of see that this is semi a viable workflow. Like if you're actually looking to design merch, this isn't a terrible option for you if you're trying to speed up your workflow, especially for those people that sell print on demand merch, um, this is definitely going to work for you. Now, this part right here is obviously an issue, so I'm just going to take my uh, lasso tool real quick, or polygonal lasso tool, and just quickly, you know, kind of go around the uh, left side here and just delete that. I would say if I was going to implement this into my workflow, I wouldn't use any of the AI background removal tools, no matter which one it is. I'd probably just bring it into Photoshop and remove the background in Photoshop. That's just my opinion about it, but uh, it didn't do a bad job at all. There's definitely some work to be done. We can actually duplicate this though to raise that uh, opacity up again, and that will fix a lot of those issues. And let's just uh, merge everything together. We could delete all of these now, because again, StyleForge needs a background in order to work. So let's go ahead and apply it and see what it looks like. It's not bad at all. Good luck generating text that looks this good in Midjourney. Midjourney does not handle text very well at all. Now I wanna go back real quick to design and let's try to export it as an SVG file. I'm just curious. Let's go color, um, line fit tolerance, super fine, probably. Uh, place shapes and cutouts. Uh, stack shapes on top of each other. I don't even know which one to use right now. Let's just vectorize it and see what it does. I brought this SVG into Illustrator real quick. And the cool thing about it is we can actually fix a lot of these issues that we had before, like this cutout, and just get rid of some of this stuff before we import it and texture it with StyleForge, for example. So this is just like one example of a workflow that you can start using. 
I like the vector format because it does give you a lot more control over you know what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. Awesome, there we go. So this is, like I said, completely vector, ready to go. If you wanted to print this, you'd probably have no problem at all. The first pro that I see is that it's an all-encompassing AI platform, right? So it does everything that Adobe AI does and mid-journey and all that in one platform, which is really convenient. Another pro, and it can be a con, is the pricing. The pricing isn't too bad. It actually starts at $8.99 per month, which is, in my opinion, a fairly reasonable price. Now, there is a cap on credit. So you get 900 credits uh, per month. So if that's not enough for you, you would obviously have to pay $20 a month, but that's right in line with what you pay with MidJourney anyway. And MidJourney doesn't do as much as this platform. And if you're doing a lot of projects and you're maybe a paid designer, you could probably justify spending 60 for unlimited credit. So um, honestly, fairly reasonable pricing. And you, you, know, you can even sign up for free right now and you get 32 regular credits a day. So you don't need to pay anything. You can go sign up right now. Um, honestly, the beginner package is probably going to be good for 99% of the people. Depending on who you are, this pricing model can be a pro or a con. I don't think it's bad. My personal opinion, I pay for mid-journey. And to be honest with you, it doesn't do half the stuff this does. So I would say another pro is just the overall experience. It's really easy to sign up and get started. It's not that hard to learn. Um, so if you're someone that doesn't have time to really learn something new, this might be the platform for you. Um, I mean, it is just a website. So you just go to the website sign up for free and you can start using it immediately. Let's go to the cons real quick. So one of the cons could be pricing depending on who you are, like I said before. Another con is that you have to learn how to craft prompts because if you're not good at crafting prompts, you might not get the results that you're looking for, but that just takes time and practice just like anything in life. Any AI generative platform is going to require you to have a certain level of understanding of prompts. So don't expect to be good at it immediately, but it does a pretty good job of kind of assisting you with your prompt since it has that feature that or function, um, it's actually like kind of like a toggle button that kind of uh, helps you with your prompt. So that's kind of cool. Another con is that sometimes the prompts took longer than expected to generate, but it's not a huge deal. And it could be just maybe I'm not doing something right. Um, it's not too bad, though. Just have a little patience with it. It's not terrible. It's not abnormally longer than what I'm used to, but it's just something I wanted to note. Overall, if you're looking for an all-in-one platform that does it all for a really good price, design.ai is going to be killer for you, especially if you're in the print-on-demand niche and you're selling on, let's say, Redbubble or Merch by Amazon. This is going to work so good for you guys. And uh, one thing that I didn't explore in this video that I might want to explore later if Design wants to sponsor me again um, is their 3D functionality because there's like really cool stuff they can do with 3D. Let me know what you guys think of design.ai in the comment section below. And if you want to sign up for free, you can do that using the link in the description. And I didn't even get to talk to you guys on New Year. So I'm going to say this now. Happy New Year. And I hope you guys have an amazing 2025. We have a lot of work to do on this channel. I'll see you guys again.